It was pitch black in the dungeon. The air was heavy and wet, the smell of mildew overpowering. The complete silence was broken by the sound of approaching footsteps and a conversation growing louder. Babel will be in Brynja's control until Satamu can return. Can't imagine it'll be more than three weeks, but with the storm coming, we can't be certain. Dancing torchlight slowly revealed the solid limestone forming the walls and floors. Two men, one significantly younger than the other, came to a stop before solid iron bars seated firmly in the floor and ceiling. Each man took a small item out of their pockets and placed them in small indentations on either side of the portcullis. The iron bars rumbled and retracted into the floor with a slow grinding noise. Bangjiku, nothing here can leave your or Sutamu's sight until their safety locked away in Magnamar. The Blossom has a vault adequate enough for their security. Father, it's time. Tell me what you've been hiding from me all of my life. You're 60 years old. Who knows how many more winters you'll see? None of that now, Longiku. Drop this conversation. The young man entered the first vault and began hastily removing the contents. Where is it? Longiku didn't know what he was looking for, yet he knew it when he found it. This is it, isn't it? What is it? Longiku spun around to the old man, offering up a large box covered in red silk embroidered with a dragon. It's a warding box. It must not be opened up in any circumstances. Before he could finish the sentence, Longico raised the lid and a blast of pressure hit both men, almost knocking them off their feet. Simultaneously, the light from the torches went out, leaving the men in solid, impenetrable darkness with nothing but the smell of mildew hanging heavy in the air to keep them company. It seemed like an eternity in that stale, heavy darkness before the old man whispered a single word that sent a chill down Longico's spine like nothing he'd ever felt before. Run. Outside, the harbor of a small village of just under 300 citizens was bustling with activity. The majority of this activity was centered on the two piers as the large fortress on the hill above was slowly being emptied, its contents drawn by horses and loaded onto three ships. Those not loading the ships were securing village buildings, bringing livestock into barns, and tying down and securing any loose items. That morning, the village prognosticator declared one of the most powerful hurricanes the village had ever seen would arrive within days. Down by the docks, an older half-elf stable hand rubbed the snout of an old palomino she raised from birth. One more trip, beautiful. She's only got uh, so much longer in her. She's not coming with us, is she, Green? No, Marv. She's kind of old. I mean, I raised her from birth and all, but it's so hard to depart with her. But I can't just leave her behind. I'm staying here, too. Why? Half the town is leaving to go to Magmar. So many new opportunities, and they, they need you there. Yeah, but Sunshine won't be there, and look, she's old, so I can't, I can't just leave her. She's, she's everything to me. Above the din of the pier, the ringing of a bell made itself heard. Brynja and the dock worker both stopped to better listen. Someone was shouting, unintelligibly at first, but slowly they could make out Sutamu yelling. Villagers to the pier. As the crowd on the pier is quieted, they could all clearly hear him. The moment of silence and hesitation was broken by an increased frenzy of movement as the throng of people obeyed his words. All men able to wield a sword to the fortress for arms. All other villagers to the pier. Anyone unable to defend themselves to the coxswain. We leave for Magnamar at sunrise. As the sun rose above the horizon, most of the villagers had either boarded the ships or were safely behind the fortress walls. At the dock, Brainya mounted the Palomino and turned to ride back to the fortress. On the road, she ran into Longico, R- Rokuru, and Tsutamu, fully armed, riding towards the harbor. Foolish woman! Excuse me? The ships are that way. I plan on riding out of the storm here. Everyone's too afraid, but... <laughs> Everyone's too afraid, but they all think they're gonna die. I think so, too. I'm just so glad Sunshine here is too old. Besides, I get seasick. I'm not going. I'm going to the fort, okay? May Gazra keep the gale at bay, foolish woman. Go, Brynja, or I'll drag you there in shackles myself. You wouldn't dare. Oh, girl, I would dare much if it meant your survival. And do not give up so easily on that horse. Sunshine has many more years in her left. Brynja nods reluctantly to Rokuro, turns her horse and head to the ships. Now, the two of you... Go. But father, what about you? Come with us. Why must you stay? You know why, Lanjiku. You must go back to Magnamar. Give your mother my love. 
and I know you'll make me proud. And you, Utamu, you have served me faithfully over these many long years. But it's time for you to leave me. I would have you protect my son as you have protected me. Then be at ease, old friend. It has been my honor to serve you and stay by your side these years. If the gods permit, we will meet again. Sutamo so bowed from his horse to his former master. With tears in his eyes, Longico healed to his horse into motion, Sutamo following. Neither man looked back. I pray you survive the storm! And I pray you survive the five. Welcome to the Strange Gods Podcast. My name is Melkor. I'll be hosting, GMing this train wreck of a podcast for you. Uh, I was about 13, I started playing a game that you may or may not have heard of, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I played it for quite a few years. Uh, about the time that I stopped, D&D had started their third edition, uh, which some consider their best version of the game. Uh, the fourth edition came out to pretty bad reviews, and some people didn't quite like the direction the game was going. Uh, so a game called Pathfinder was born. Uh, it's a spiritual successor to D&D 3.5. Paizo, the creator of Pathfinder, is actually testing Pathfinder 2.0, which I'm actually pretty excited about. So anyway, years went by, uh, I started running into old friends of mine that had started to play D&D again. Uh, there's some great systems uh, called Virtual Tabletops, which offer some good resources to allow you to play RPGs like D&D and Pathfinder uh, over the interweb, and you really don't miss much except for having to wear clothes and having other people pay for your Mountain Dews. Uh, so about two years ago, I put a post up on Roll20. Uh, I was looking for players to play Pathfinder's Strange Eons campaign. Uh, and that was the beginning of our gamer group, which we now refer to as Strange Gods. Paizo puts out these stories called Adventure Paths. They're pre-written stories that take your campaign from level 1 through level 16 to 18 or so. Uh, these campaigns can actually take years to complete. Uh, so about six months ago, we decided to try uh, recording a podcast. When deciding what adventure path to play, uh, what we wanted to record, we went through a lot of possible choices. Uh, long story short, we wanted to stick with a classic story, something that represents the genre very well, something that represents the game very well. Um, so we sat down and discussed our choices, and it was almost unanimously decided that Jade Region is the AP to do. Uh, so here we are. Um, this is our rendition of Jade Region. Sit back and uh, I hope you enjoy the game. So yeah, we'll go, we'll go around real quick, just introduce ourselves, uh, who you are, and who you'll be playing. Hello, listeners. Uh, my name is uh, Isaac. Uh, everyone calls me Izzy. I will be piloting Zephyr, a.k.a. Fletch, the half-elven inquisitor. Is that all I want to do, whole spiel? Yeah, good. Do sure, your spiel, like... Alright, gotta get psyched. Whew. Whew. And that's all we have time for. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, Puddles. Always leave them wanting more. All right. Hello. My name is Puddles, also known as HR Lady, awesomest player, best friend, best sister, best daughter, everything. Um, once I bit a guy on the head so hard as my tooth chipped. Once I almost drowned because I stepped on a sea urchin and I forgot how to swim because it hurt so much. Hmm. And I have a secret persona I've been trying to name for years, but I never manage because I keep changing. Uh, only one of those, or... Maybe two or three are true. I can't remember. Sea urchin. I think I'm... I, uh, maybe? All right. I don't know. All right. Who knows? Yeah. That's. Can a sea urchin be furry? A sea urchin can't be furry. It's spiky. Pensate, I would know I've stepped on one. All right. See? Told you. <laughs> hey, my name's Joe, uh, but everybody calls me uh, Fridge. I'm going to be playing as uh, Gilmet Fridger, who is a dwarf cleric of Torag. Uh, I tend to be a more improv player. I tend to not bring much in the beginning. And then uh, kind of as the game progresses, I kind of figure out what I'm going to do with them. So hopefully you'll uh, enjoy kind of what comes out of Gilmet. Excellent. Oh, yeah. I'm playing Agnes. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, did, uh, did you? Hello there. I'm Mark. Hi. People call me Mark. You, you know, you, you might see why. He's the creative um, one. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll be wielding a brathy into both combat and awkward social situations. And I will be the butt of many inside jokes. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> My name is Bear, everyone. Nice to meet you. Hi, Bear. I will be playing the dashing rogue Divish, 
As you can see, I maneuvered cleverly into the best for last. Devish is a bit of a goer. A real, a real visionary. A big idea, man. Oh, be quiet, Divish. It's not our introductions yet. Aye. Oh, okay. Wait, is Divish Cockney? Fuck, I was going to make Gilmet Cockney. <laughs> Are we all some version of English? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm flat to make both. Yeah! Oi, you know what I mean. Well, the dwarf finishes his last stretch of his 10-day journey from Yanderhof. The smell of ocean air is refreshing. Crossing the Sandpoint Bridge, he stops briefly to look at the too familiar sign. Welcome to Sandpoint. Please stop to see yourselves as we see you. He stops and looks at himself in the mirror. What do we see? I see it. an obviously stout dwarf, clad in only the best scale now, a long, flowing red beard, and just... I'm not taking shit looking his eye. But he's gonna get shit regardless. You mean him or you? Who's getting the shit? Open open to interpretation. All right. Okay. So Brothley approaches. So we're gonna take you now to a small makeshift laboratory surrounded by flasks of liquid and powders, some boiling and smoking. We see a man slowly pouring a black powder into a wooden tube and packing it in with a brush covered in black soot. A bit of mitre, a little bit of magnesium, yum yum, and some salt of peter. Devish is a lanky fella, with fine fingers, practically swimming in an acid-stained overcoat. He's got broad, mousy ears, and no hair or eyebrows left from his experiments with explosive substances. He grins in a way that makes him look pleasantly surprised with everything, unless he's grinning with his bug-eyed safety goggles on. Then he looks to most people as pleasantly insane. He's known about Sandpoint as an odd, odd job man, and a bit of a fuck-up. If he wants something done in a cheaper, possibly smarter, and definitely more entertaining fashion, you call him. All right. Yeah, so as he's, uh, he's pouring the powder into another tube, he hears, uh, he hears a loud knocking on the door. It scares him, makes him jump, almost spilling the black powder. So, uh, irritated, you get up, go answer the door. You see a dwarf. Divish, long time no see. I do remember you having at least one eyebrow, though. Has this Koi ever turned? Uncle Brothe! Oh! And he gets down and gives the dwarf a big hug. Hey, hey. Oh, I haven't seen you since I was about this high. How have you been? Better. Oh, anyway, Koya's not home yet. Uh, have you checked the dragon? No. I, I was gonna go there last. It would get hammered on the way here. Not, not yet. <laughs> Awkward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Care, care to join me? Care, care to join me? Um, no sir, busy trying to get the fireworks done for tomorrow night. Oh. You see, I, I put this sign on my lab door that says, Don't knock unless you like explosions. Did you read that by chance, or was it too high for you? Uh, the sign's too high. Oh, sorry, I'll put it on a lower peg here. You know, I'll make sure that somebody reads it next time, and hopefully I don't die. Well, anyway, hope you find Koya. Say hello to Mum for me. Ooh, what? Side of the door. Okay, so, um, Brothy leaves. Divish gets back to his work after a few more minutes. There's another knock on the door. So, imagine he's a little bit more irritated than last time, but he opens the door. Who the hell? This time he opens the door and his heart sinks in his chest. Oh, no. Across town, there's a half-elf approaching the counter in an upscale shop. There's a half a dozen bows in his hand, and he rings the bell on the counter. Who do we see? All right, so Fletch is uh, moderate height, uh, definitely more elven-looking than human. Um, Long face, long brown hair with, with blonde highlights, very well tan. Not like an ounce of baby fun on his body, middle to late twenties, age maybe early early thirties, hard to tell for an elf. And, uh, probably fairly uh, dirty, worn clothes, spends a lot of his time outdoors. Okay. 
So, uh, Fletch takes a minute, looks around. See a lot of upscale clothing, weapons, toys, books, tools from all over the world. Uh, I imagine he's got a quick moment of self-doubt. You know, your 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 bows are good enough. And you know, look over by the door. You know, Halis Halis Corvassi. You know, she always wears the same coat no matter what the weather is. And there it is, hanging on the hook by the door. She's got her cane leaning right next to it. She's definitely here in the building. Uh, pick up the bell, ring it another time, and a hand just claps onto yours and stops the bell. I heard you the first time, Fletch. I was in the back room. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I wasn't sure you'd heard. I brought you some of my new wares. She just looks quickly. Yes, uh, put them in the barrel over there. Barrel? <laughs> hey, listen, not refuse. This is quality stuff. Uh, let, let me see one. I, I hand her a bow. She's looking at it. Yes, yes, I, I admit this is better than the usual ones you bring, but people people coming in here are looking for looking for exotic work. You know, they're, they're looking for quality, classic Varesian stuff here. Yeah, look at this one. She pulls one off the display behind her. This here is Talden Oak. I look at the detail on the description here, and she's pointing it out. Yeah, that's that's great. Made in jelly hex by slaves. Yeah, this it's good quality wood, but the craftsmanship is shite. I'd, I'd put ten ten coin that any of my bows would outshoot this one. Yes, yes, about that. Um, here you go, and she just drops a sack of coin on the counter. Pick it up and weigh it. Wow. <laughs> Five gold a piece. That's a miser's bargain. What do you take me for a fool? Jasper said they were fifteen each. Yeah, okay, well, I'm not. I'm not Jasper, am I? I suppose not. I'm not a fool either. I guess I'll take my uh, wares and go. Uh, one minute. One minute. Um, how about how about that bow there? And she points to the bow on your back. I'll give you give you a hundred fifty right here for that. <laughs> yeah, maybe you do have an eye for quality, but uh, apparently not the pocket. This one's not for sale, but if you'd like to custom order one like it, that'll be 350 gold for my time. Yeah, it's not worth it. I'll get cheaper ones elsewhere. Uh, good day to you, then. Cheaper indeed. I'll just point my fingers up like Ash Ketchum as I walk away into the sunset. So Brothy approaches the Rusty Dragon. He's, re- he's greeted by familiar sounds of the Samuson. He opens the door and he walks in. <laughs> Behind the counter, he finds the source of the music. is a, a young, beautiful human tea and woman. Uh, white streaks in her black hair, only in her 20s. Rothy's known her since she was just a child. Dressed in red leather armor, sword at her side. She's simultaneously relaxed and on alert for a brawl. In lieu of a greeting, she gives Brothy a smile and a nod and changes the song to an ancestral dwarven tune that strikes Brothy in the heart. Quietly, Brothy takes a sweet seat at the bar and waits for the song to finish. Brothy, we've missed you. What do you have? Amigo comes over. Uh. Glass after my own heart. I'll, I'll have one of everything. Ah, uh, you got it. And she goes, starts pouring you something from a brown bottle. Tell you what, this drink is on the house, and I'll, I'll throw in some smoked salmon if you if you tell us about your trip here. Will I? Oh, this is this is Agnes. <laughs> this is Agnes here. Yeah, she points out. I'm called. Oh uh, well, yes. You see, I'm called Agnes, not to be confused with Agatha, mind you. So she's my sister. But it's not the time or place to talk about her, possibly never. And you see an older woman who, brown skin, gray haired, she looks like she's constantly scowling. Very stern, very, very stick up her ass, like, sitting at the bar. I see, I see. So the door swings open. You guys see, yeah, yeah. Familiar man with, um, I don't know if Brothy would know him, but you see a uh, familiar looking half elf with uh, a half a dozen bows in his hand. Mako sees you walk in. Hey, did you make a sale, Fletch? Mm. Uh, Fletch will walk over past the group to a corner seat, turn the chair to face the doors in the bar. Make a sale to that cow faced wench. No. She offered me a beggar's bargain of five gold apiece. Can you believe that? Five gold for my work. Uh, she'll, she'll come around. Have you talked to Jasper? Yeah, not since the morn. Hey, uh, I'll take a, uh, you got any brandy left? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah, she, she grabs a bottle, just gives you the bottle and a glass, puts it on your table. Flip our coin. Back at the Mavastis, there's a man dressed in dark leathers and he's got a half a dozen dagger sheath on his back. He gently pushes his way past, uh, past Divish, just walks straight towards the alchemy lab. I love, I love that, boss. How are you doing? Eh, not too bad. 
He has a cane, he takes it out, points it out. Yeah, it's a beautiful setup there, Divish. I, I can't wait for your display tomorrow night. I, I hear I hear your fireworks are legendary. I, I enjoy my work. Uh, what brings you here today, Jay? To Jabrail. Uh, listen, he does that thing where he like, picks like a piece of, piece of lint off your shoulder. Uh, I, I've been a bit easy on you, Divish, because I, I, I know what you needed the money for, but uh, a loan is a loan. I just need a little more time. Hey, listen, listen, I'm a reasonable man, Nivish. I, I, I'm not here to break legs or demand payment or anything. I just, I, I got a small favor, maybe, maybe, uh, you know, sort of a tit for tat. I'll, I'll forgive your deadline for a little bit, but, um, uh, just gotta, uh, just need you to acquire something for me. It's a pretty simple mm. thing. What is it? All right, and he holds up his cane. It's like, uh... Yeah, see this? Yeah, he says, uh, seems like I grabbed the wrong cane. I, I just need you to get me the right one. You see, uh, Hayless Corvassi down at the uh, Sandpoint Boutique, she's got the same cane as me, right? It's a bit embarrassing, but last time I was there, I accidentally grabbed her cane instead of mine. I, all I need you to do is go into the boutique, leave this cane, take hers by the door. Easy peasy. Uh-huh. Why don't I just ask her to switch him? Uh, see, that's the thing. I thought you were asking about that. The thing is, uh, Halus doesn't like me too much, I'm sure you understand. Uh, but people people associate me with the sun. Yeah, justly, of course, but uh, rather than get you involved anyway, I, 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 you can just go in, switch the canes, be on your way, I'll give you some more time for your debt. But... Listen, I, I said I wasn't here to collect, but maybe I should have been a little bit more clear. Um, I'm here to give you a choice, you see. I can, I can collect your debt now, or I can allow you to do me a favor. If I'm... If I'm collecting, uh, you know I'll get what I'm after. Okay, okay, boss. I'll do it. All right. Takes a cane, just kind of leans it up against the alchemy station. All right, take my leave here, and he uh, turns and uh, walks out. Uh, I'll show him. <laughs> Two minutes later, I uh, imagine Divish goes to uh, take care of the cane situation. A little while later... Nobody, nobody's at the Mavashi residence anymore. There's a light knock on the door. Door swings open. There's an older woman. Um, uh, she uh, looks like an old Varesian fortune teller. Uh, she lowers her hood. Uh, Divish, Divish, are you home? And uh, there's a man in his mid mid thirties follows her into the house. Hey, Divish. Ah, uh, he's probably at the dragon trying not to get in any trouble. Yeah, uh, well, uh, co- come on in, Gil- uh, Gilmit. Um, have a seat for a few minutes. We'll make you some place to sleep for the night. Well, they have all the same. I don't mind checking into the Rusty Dragon. You've been telling me about it. Are you sure it's no trouble? Uh, to, to be honest, you'll probably have more fun at the Dragon, but uh, you'll save your money if you stay here. Uh, I, I know how much you got paid for the last contract, so I know money's money's not not really an issue for you. Uh, so tell us uh, tell us about Gilmet. Uh, when you look at Gilmet, you're going to see a blonde-haired dwarf with uh, armor that looks like it's seen better days, but if you know what you're looking for, you're going to tell that this armor has actually been masterfully taken care of. Just the aesthetics aren't the most important thing. There's a war hammer slung upon his back, and there is a giant symbol of Torag on his chest uh, in cloth hanging over his armor. Um, you're going to see a stern look on his face, but... With that stern look is some beautifully kind eyes. Oh, that's nice. Handsome. You say that. About the caravan, uh, I think it may be time for us to part ways. Uh, are you leaving us, Gilbert? Yeah, to be honest, I'm having a great time. But it isn't what I thought spreading the word of Thorag would be like. Uh, I'd like to travel a bit more, see the world. Uh, yes, you've got the adventuring bug. I, I understand. He puts his hand on your on your shoulders. You got my blessing there, Gilmit. Uh, that being said, now I insist you stay at the Dragon tonight. Uh, trust me, uh, all, all good adventures begin there. If there's an adventure to be had, it's gonna start in that tavern. And then uh, <laughs> Koya chimes in. Uh, prom- promise not to go anywhere without saying goodbye to us. We've we've gotten to know you quite a bit these last few months. You're, you're like family to us. And she comes over, she gives you a big hug. Ah. Uh. You know, I'll, if you need anything, just just let me know. I'll gladly come back here and give you a hand in anything I can do. Oh, thank you. So meanwhile, at the boutique, the store is quite busy as visitors coming in from all over Varisia to see the uh, Swallowtail Festival it begins tomorrow. So 
Divish walks in. Uh, Halus immediately sees him, comes over. Hi, uh, Divish, good to see you. Looking, looking for more magnesium. Jasper just brought some in, and I think your brother Sandra is supposed to have uh, some, some Quicksilver brought up here, too. No, 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 I'm fine, yeah. Uh, Fletch, Fletch was supposed to bring in some uh, some bows today. Uh, he, he just he, he doesn't know he doesn't know quality. He brought some uh, less than less than perfect, I guess, a little scratched and dented. But uh, uh, I offered him some good money for uh, the one uh, uh, the one he carries around with him. I think there's something personal. I wouldn't wouldn't sell that either. So um, well, uh, anyway. Oh, oh, really? That is that so? That that is a shame. A real shame. Hey, hey, sec. Can you can you uh, check the back if you have any more salt of Peter for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I got some. Uh, just a second, yeah, you old coot. I'll, I'll help you out. Just turns, goes around the corner. All right, sleight of hand check. Give me a sleight of hand. All right. Bam. I roll a twenty-seven. Whoa. Twenty-seven. Versus her three perception. <laughs> All right. Yeah, she's. <laughs> Come, she comes out like, yeah, it's my cane over there. It's thing of beauty. I know my cane from anywhere, and I know that hasn't moved an inch since I went in the back room. No, it has not. I can <laughs> verify that myself. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's 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 like got his hands up his back, and he slid the cane up uh, up the back of his jacket, and sort of like let it rest in the crack of his pants. <laughs> <laughs> so he's kind of standing like he's got a stick up his back now. <laughs> <laughs> It's like walking with a straight leg. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, so back at the uh, back at the Rusty Dragon, we see uh, we see Gilmit, the uh, the blonde dwarf, approaching the door. He walks in. He sees uh, he sees Brothy, Agnes, and Mako all at the counter. Uh, what do you do? Go in there, have a drink. Yeah, Gilman's gonna go in, uh, and the first thing you do is ask for a drink. And like, uh, and who's gonna come up to him? Uh, you, Mako. Yeah, uh, welcome. Ah, glad to be here. You know, I was told that this is uh, the place to go for uh, adventures, perhaps. Do you know anything about that? Oh, this is definitely the place, sir. Uh, he's like, well, uh, stick around, something. Uh, adventures always come walking right through that door. I bet you at any point, someone's going to come in with some kind of adventure hook. And she sits there, ah, leans on the counter. That seems rather convenient. <laughs> about 30 seconds later, uh, the door swings open. <laughs> You see, um, perhaps this is the one. <laughs> you see a, uh, a a young, tall, blonde-haired elf walking in. She's got a bow slung over her back. Her clothes are like camouflage, forest-colored. So she immediately she stops, gives a quick glance over to Fletch, and uh, she heads over to the counter. Uh, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> um, hi, Shalalu. Good to um, see you today uh, again today uh, for the f- def- uh, Hi. Oh, hey, hey, Fletch. So, Ameku, um, I think we're going to talk. I think the goblins are up to something. And uh, Ameku stops and she, she says, oh, come, come here, come here, come here. She, pull, she pulls her over to, to Gilmit. See, this is what I was talking about. Yeah, go, go on, Shalalu. She kind of looks very awkwardly at, at Ameku. Like, yes, um, well, the, the goblins are, are up to something. I, I, saw, I saw a pair on the, on the Lost Coast Road. They were... They were carrying some bags. I, I I didn't see where they got them from, but chances are they weren't theirs. They were they were too nice for goblins. Uh, I make us like I, I I hope they're not planning another swallowtail festival attack. So I was like I I don't I don't think so. I mean they they were headed to the uh, the Brinestop marshes. I make a, I make a turns to Brothy, Gilmer, and Agnes. Say hey, this sounds like there's an adventure brewing. So they just kind of stops. She rolls her eyes. Do I do I know you guys? No, no. Um, uh, this is uh, this is Shalalu, and Shalalu just kind of gives a solemn nod. She's like, my my name's Ameko. I am the, uh, the 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 owner of this here establishment, and um, and you look like an adventurer to me. Aye, that I might be. Uh, first adventure tomorrow. I am cooking some salmon. It's gonna be <laughs> spicy. Have you ever had salmon from the Rusty Dragon before? Nope. Can't say I have. All right, you sit right here. Shalalu, entertain our guests. And she just goes and leaves the back room. Shalalu just looks really, really awkward. She's like, yeah. Um, pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you too, lass. What's this about the goblins? Uh, yes, yes. So there was, um, I, I see, I, I spent some time 
wandering around the woods here and, and uh, try to keep an eye on the goblin situation. And it's uh, they usually stay to the marshes themselves, but it looks like there was a couple of them that had some had some bags. And um, a rumor, rumor has it that there's been some merchants that have been robbed recently. And maybe uh, I'm thinking that maybe it has something to do with it. Uh, do I have a map of the area in my inventory? That'd be something I just have. Uh, if you didn't have a map, uh, they could point you in a direction to get one. Perhaps you could point me on the map wherever you've seen these goblins. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And she takes the map and uh, she points. It's a few, a couple miles south of Sandpoint. You see, uh, if you follow the coast uh, southwest along where Sandpoint is, you see the Brian Stuff Marsh. It's kind of like, it's just like this small, maybe two square mile section. It's just like thickly wooded. She's like, yes, they, they were they were between here and there, and she's she's pointing out where they were. She says, I heard that there was a, a merchant that was robbed, but he was robbed over here, and she's pointing north of Sandpoint. Mm. Well, I say we take a hunting party tomorrow and go, go uh, track him down. Wait, wait, were you part of this conversation? This is something I was having with her. Yeah, sorry, I didn't, uh, you're not a familiar face. Fletch is the name. I'm a friend of Shalalus. Pleasure to meet you. Oh, pleasure to meet you too. Name's Gilmet. You have an idea about these goblins? I know a little bit, but uh, the thing I know more than anything is nothing's quite as satisfying as seeing one on the end of your arrow. A little bit morbid, but I like it. Um, sorry, uh, Rathy, when did you get into town? I haven't seen you. Well, maybe you should look down a little, a little more often. Ah, uh, always with the jokes. Hey, um, have you seen Divish? My father said he didn't show up this morning. I was just wondering if I had to go bail him back out of the stocks again. Uh, last I saw of him, he was you know, at his, his workshop or whatever the hell that is. He might might have blown himself up by now, but he'll he'll live. I haven't heard I haven't heard any screams or seen any fires, so he's either asleep or in trouble. Probably out there stealing some old lady's cane. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna. Uh, so, Shalai, it's uh, uh, not like you to uh, let goblins get away. Or you uh, track them far. They got into the marsh, and I, uh, I'm not going not gonna to follow much into there, but um, uh, I, I hear that there's, um, the, the, the tribe in there to get a little, little bit more, uh, little more crazy by the day. Yeah, they're a, a rowdy bunch. I'd like to deliver them to the third level of hell myself. Uh, how's the uh, bow holding up from the travels? You needed... Uh, Old uh, restrung or anything, just swing it by the shop. I'll uh, I'll make sure to get it uh, up and running again. It looks all right. Yeah, it's just in good shape. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll be, sh- I'll be sure to stop by. Um, what do you got there? She motions to the bows. On uh, the bow on my back or the stack of bows on the table? No, the uh, the stack on the right, table. So I'm I'm trying to expand, you know, and get to make more money, of course. Um, so I took these down to the, to the shop and. Hey, this offered me five gold apiece for him. That's, I've got more than that in materials. Uh, I don't know why you waste your time. Can Gilmer run an appraise check on that? Yeah. Well, let me just double check that I... Uh, what's the dwarf thing? Uh, it's for, like, jewels and stuff. No, there's no... I'm yeah. sorry, it's, it's only with... Yeah. yeah, plus two on gems yeah, and Yeah, that's it. I thought I could immediately... I mean, if you still have appraise, okay. yeah. But. I'm going to do it. Uh, what is... Uh, modifier's uh, intelligence. That's what you're asking. Thank you. Well, zero for me. Does Divish, does Divish head to the bar too, or does he go back home with his cane? I mean, he'd go back home with the cane first. All right, fine. Divish kicks the door in and goes, Uh, Mako, my love, I need some of your curry. There he is. Yes, yes, I get you. Hang on a minute. I'm just getting some fish for this guy. She goes in, grabs a, grabs a few plates. She's got her arms full. She's doing that thing where like there's like three on her arms. She's just tossing them down. All right, you want the spicy stuff? Oh yeah, you know it. Yeah, you like it spicy. Yeah, all right. I'll get you some in a minute. Yeah. And she turns around, and goes back. You only get the spicy when you're in trouble. Why didn't you show up for work at my father's shop this morning? I've had a long day, Fletch, and I'd rather not talk about it. Is the law going to knock on my door this morning before I am awake? (laughs) I showed the law. Uh, 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 Nothing. No, no, no. Absolutely not. (laughs) 
Gonna keep bailing you out. Gonna need to make more than five gold of bow. Divish, can you believe that woman? Uh, do, do you remember um, Halis, right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember Hylas. Well, what, about, what about Hylas? <laughs> what, what about, what about Hylas' kind? <laughs> yeah? What? You're a bit deaf. Are you quite all right? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, t- I took these bows down there, right? She offered me five gold apiece for me, old bitch. Oh, oh that makes me feel better about not doing anything bad to her today. Wow, what a bitch is she? Oh, man, Fletch. You know, what you ought to do is, like, shoot arrows into the side of a house in a rude message. Like, cheapskate or something. Right, Divish, um, I've explained this to you before. That's, um, that's attempted murder, right, and that's, that's one of the... the... No, 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 I just mean a little bit of midnight property damage. Yips. I usually don't enforce that. Still a law, okay? Listen, I will get back at her my own way, right? It was an insult, right, but I'm not going to try and kill her. All right, I'll get it. Kill her with kindness. Wink. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, uh, did, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't catch your name. Uh, wait. Did I, just... I hear. I hear. I hear. Gilmet <laughs> winking. It's like, Gimlet, you little. <laughs> I'm a loud winker. What can I say? Um. Hi there. Uh. My name's uh, uh Fletch. Uh. But I'm. I'm not seen you around here before. This is the little freeloader I mean honored guest at my mother's house. I will lean down and whisper into Gilmet's ear. Right, keep your hands on your coin tonight, right? Right. And if he tries to snatch him, go ahead and take his hand off. I've been trying to do it for years. Something to be worried about. Yeah, uh, just keep your eyes about you. Huh? This one here, can't trust him. I-, I will say it openly and like pat Divish on the shoulder. So he's got sticky fingers. There's, I don't, I don't always wash them after the lab, but they're not always sticky. I, I don't always use sticky substances, and maybe it helps me find things that maybe I shouldn't have. But you know, it's not my problem. No, see, it's it's literally your problem. It, it you have a problem. But, uh, I need another drink. Well, I'm sorry they got such loose pockets. Omega <laughs> comes out with a with a bowl. Here's your, here's your curry, nice and spicy like you like it. I put a little extra a little extra chili powder in there for you. And she puts it down. Oh, thank you, darling. And he just dives his face in it. So now, now, Gilmit, I heard that you are going to tell us some stories tonight, and you're going to get a room on the house. Is that true? Oh, I didn't hear about this. Yes. Oh. I heard you've been spending a lot of time on the road. And you've got a lot of stories to tell us about adventures that you and Sandru and Koya have been on. Kimlet, do as she says. Oh, I'll, I'll think of some stories right now. Gonna rub his hands together, stroke his beard. Just the other week, we were taking a caravan in between a town just north of here. Oh, it was crazy. So, we're riding up on the caravan. We just have a load of nothing but just some grain. Some grain and two barrels, maybe some, some meat of some sort, something in, a, uh, in oil. And as we're riding up, we start hearing this weird sound, like a screeching. I, of course, as the guard, decide to take up my war hammer. And I'm standing on the back looking around, but I'm, I'm looking down on the ground. Oh. I'm looking for something that's uh, going to come out of the tall grass by the side of the road. Oh, what was it? It was a fucking griffin. Jeez, that's crazy. So, uh... You're telling that story, and then like a bunch of a bunch of guys just come in the bar that seem like they're rowdy already. They've been drinking for a little bit, kind of smash around. Like there he was, this soggy river monster. He saw him again. I say, hey, old old Jenkins saw him down the New Fish Trail. He stood taller than a man. He goes, oh, Miko, you heard of this soggy river monster, right? And she's just like, yeah, pardon me for a minute. Yeah, I say, what, what do you boys have? Uh, we'll have we'll have the brandy, yeah. And then just, just go and like sit down, and find a table. It's like the, the Soggy River Monsters out again. It's like a Jenkins saw them, yeah, right. And then they're all just kind of getting rowdy. Say so, what I don't understand about that name is ain't every river a bit soggy? I I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, not down there. This this one leads out to Sog's Bay. That's why they call it soggy. Ah, right. Just a warning to everyone. If That's tracks, still a dumb name. If Divish is going to start being philosophical, I suggest we keep the drinks coming. 
How about a round on me? Everybody, pick up a glass. Come on, let's drink. I absolutely I feel this awful for us when my tongue is lubricated. I thank you for covering my tab, Fletch, my friend. So one of the one of the drunk guys comes and uh, sits down next to uh, next to Agnes. Yeah, so sweet lady. Yeah, here yeah, you get. Um, yeah, you got nothing to worry about. Me and the guys here protect you from the, uh, the soggy bottom monster. Mm. Oh man, the beer goggles are strong with this one. <laughs> hey! <laughs> uh, don't you worry, Les. I'm sure I'll be in quite capable mm. hands. Thank you. Uh, yeah, they are quite capable, it turns into his hands. But yeah, you gotta watch out, right? Because it says that the goblins down there, they got, they got their hands on some fireworks. But that's alright. Soggy River Monster's taking care of them, he's eating them up. Well then, I suppose the fireworks won't be going off if they're all soggy. Oh, wouldn't that be something, eh? He eats them and they go off in his stomach, oh, that'd be crazy. Yes, quite. There's a trick to soggy fireworks, actually. Really? Do tell. So eat more fire than you'd normally use. Oh. One of the guy, one of the guys stops like, yeah, yeah, Divis, don't you usually deal with fireworks? Yeah. Yeah, I wonder how... I wonder how those goblins got those fireworks. Um, not mine. Yeah, that's, that's probably what you say. Yeah, well... I, well, I, w- I would say that, because I'm innocent. Right, yeah, I guess it's, uh, I guess it's a mystery. Huh? I, I hope you don't get blamed for it, man. That'd be that'd be pretty inconvenient for you, eh? Divish looks down into his, his empty bowl of curry. He goes, I don't even do this one. Oh, man. Yeah, Divish, don't you, uh... Initial each of your uh, fireworks or, or something? Yeah, yeah, I put a day on every one of my rockets. I call them day rockets. Uh, who's, who's spending the night at the uh, Rusty Dragon? I guess. Gilbert is. Okay. I'll hang around if I'm drunk enough, sure. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so the, the night passes pretty uneventfully, you know, sitting around drinking, telling stories. For the most part, a couple of rowdy guys come in, a Mako takes care of them. See, morning comes around, and Obrathi, you, you were planning on going to see Koya. Uh, I don't know if you got word that Koya was back yet, but I suppose you'd be heading to Koya's house. Yeah, I heard, heard a little right, So, uh, Ameko and Agnes, uh, in the morning, you guys just head straight to, straight to the kitchen. You know, the whole place smells like fish. You guys are just cooking up large batches of uh, spicy salmon for the uh, Taste of Sandpoint contest, where local <laughs> bars and taverns all pitch in their favorite dishes and the... Uh, the townsfolk vote on uh, who has the, the best food. And uh, Ameko specializes in the, the spicy foreign stuff. Everyone else tends to have bland, you know, decent quality food, but it's all bland local stuff. So she usually wins at least one prize for her, uh, her specialty foods. So uh, as, they're, as they're cooking up, Sandrew walks in. Okay, hey, uh, hey, the, hey, hey Amiko, you need, you need any help? Got everything taken care of? And she's like, yeah, yeah, uh, Agnes and I got this. Uh, we should be, we should be fine. Um, uh, h- how was your trip? We saw, we saw Gilmet last night. He's, he's around here somewhere. It's like, ah, oh, fine, fine. He, he, he came by last night. Eh? He's, he's looking, he's looking for an adventure. That's what he told me. He's trying to spread the good word, word of, of Torag. Go easy on him, will you? So he sees, uh, uh, he sees Brothy. Hey, Brothy, yes, um. Uh, mom's mom's back in town. She's she should be at the house still. Or she might have head to the cathedral. I'm not sure, but uh, if if you hurry, you should be able to catch her. Oh, thank you. I was, I was looking for her. Amiko's like, well, why don't you why don't you take him? I mean, we 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 got this fine. Why don't you take him there? Yeah, okay, all right. I'll I'll, I'll take him. That's fine. Uh, let me know. Let me know if you guys need help. All right. Hey, good to see you, Agnes. Goodbye. Have a nice day. It's very good to see you too. Yes. All right, Brothy, this way, and it takes you. Head over to the Mavashti residence. They go in, and uh, Koya is still there. You see her like uh, she's got this strange like um, uh, it's like a little a small statue with like a star on it, and uh, she's taking that out of her out of a crate. She's got some other stuff. Looks like she's kind of taking inventory or something. She's like, "Brothy, how are you?" And she gets up and walks over, and she gives you a hug. Good to see you. It's it's been a long time. It's it's been a few months. Uh, what have you been up to? Oh, just doing things in the forge and this and, and that. How are you? I'm good. I've been I've been great. I've been on the road with Sandrew. And he just kind of he just kind of smiles. He's like, uh, does that thing where like like pushes his heels up like he's got somewhere to go. He's like, yep, we've been on the road. Find anyone interesting? 
No, it's been it's been it's been pretty boring. Uh, you you know me. I I I really I I want to go somewhere further. Um, you know, came back uh, came back from Magnamar this time. I mean, we took a trip to Yanderhof once or twice, but it's it's really not it's not what I had in mind. I, I want to go. I want to go somewhere. I want to see the world, especially since uh, since since mom's passing. I so um yeah, she's kind of. Breeze, look around the place. Yeah. Yeah, she always, she always spoke so highly of you. She said you were a talker. Lots of, uh, always, always saying lots of stuff. But um, yeah, you know her. She likes to make things up. Yeah, uh, getting over some trying to try, try get sober again. You see. <laughs> oh, I hear you. I hear you. That's that's fine. I, I drank a little, little bit too much last oh, night. Oh yeah, yeah, over at the over at the Dragon, I assume, right? You weren't over at the uh, uh, the the other joint there. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, taking some uh, uh, taking some statues down to the cathedral for uh, for the swallow tail. Uh, they're going to be releasing the uh, releasing the swallows around noon. Y- you you care to join me? Oh yeah, sure. If if you need a hand. Oh yeah, I could always use a hand. Yes, uh, uh, Sandro, could you show him the boxes that are that are coming with us? And he's like, yes, yes, uh, these ones here, this one, and just kind of point out. Uh, no. What, what is Divish doing here and all this? Is he is he home? Is he out and about? See, I can't decide if he'd be asleep in his laboratory after working all night, or already on the roof of the cathedral trying to set up. I guess if like it's the morning and people are just getting moving. Yeah. Yes, people are just starting to move things around. So everyone's getting ready. They're setting stuff up. Uh, the majority of the festival is happening over near the cathedral. But all right, now he'd probably uh, he'd probably be trying to move as quickly as possible to <laughs> climb up. Oh. To climb scaffolding around the cathedral and get a good uh, get a good setup on the roof and someplace where I can shout down at the crowd. Cool. All right. So you're up there doing your thing. Koya, Koya and Brothy are uh, reminiscing, getting their stuff, bringing down the cathedral. We got Mako, Mako and Agnes cooking. Cooking up a storm. Yep. Uh, Shalala is nowhere to be found. Zephyr, what are you up to? I would probably, since I stayed the night at the Rusty Dragon, would probably be sitting at the bar next to Gilmet if he's still there. And I'd be like, oh, you know, I've always heard that dwarves could drink like horses, but don't you feel anything? My head is splitting and you drank four times as much as I did. Agnes, would you please mix me a rehab? Why is it always that horses? I'm sure I would if I knew what that was. Horses are what you're compared to. You piss like a horse. You drink like a horse. You weigh as much as a horse. Because they drink a lot. Okay, I didn't say anything about your weight. Good Lord. My head is pounding. Doesn't make you feel good. Why are you cooking fish? I think I'm gonna puke. You don't like, don't care for fish. I love you, fish, right? But my head is hurting so badly from that brandy. I'm, why'd you let me drink that much? You know I don't drink. Well, uh, you know it's uh, everyone's everyone's having a good time. I I I would have taken your keys away. I wouldn't have let you drive. I guess I let my emotions get ahead of me. I just can't get over that five gold, five gold, Agnes, five gold. She offered me five gold for my butt. Well, you know, uh, uh, what a rip. Amiko uh, kind of leans leans in a little bit. You know, I bet you, I bet you, you could set up a stand during the festival, and, and uh, nobody will know there's so much going on. You could probably sell those for easily forty, fifty gold a piece. Now look at the craftsmanship on that. You, you really think so? You're not just saying that because you know we've known each other for twenty odd years. Yeah, you know, that's a good idea. I could set up a stand where people could shoot them. Maybe a competition, right? Oh, Miko, you're the best. You know that? You're the best. Uh, I try. I try. Amiko, are you going to actually enjoy the festival this time, or are you going to stay here working all day? You know, you ought to get out once in a while. Ah, uh, this is this is my idea of fun. Bring people down to the dragon. Maybe set people up with some work here and there. I a saint you are. Uh, speaking of, I mean, uh, possibly look into those look into those goblins. I don't think... Uh, yes. It doesn't sound like much. You know, Sh- Shalala's a bit jumpy when it comes to goblins. Uh, I think... Um, we probably would have known if they were more of a, if they were more of a threat, but um, uh, it's still still worth looking into. While she's saying that, Zephyr would just blankly stare off past over her shoulder or something. Gilmet, while he's staring uh, over at Shlalu, he's not going to notice exactly what's happening, and he's going to slap him real hard on the back, and he's be like, "What do I say about you, friend? What about you and I get together? Oh, and we take care of these goblins. Headache, personal space. Uh, is it right? I'm I'm totally in. There's nothing." more fun than slaying goblins and sightseeing but 
It gets rid of the headache. What do you do for a hangover? Yeah, hang, hang on just a minute. I actually got something brewing for you. I make her leaves and she goes into the, the kitchen. She comes back with like a little teapot. She takes it out. She pours you pours you a cup. She puts like a little bit of honey in it. She's like, yeah, drink drink this. Give it about 20 minutes. Yeah, let's going to smell it before he takes a step. What does it smell? It smells like honey and, um, and dill. Ooh, smells pretty good. Sign me up. Yeah, she says it doesn't smell very good without the honey, though. Drink it. It'll actually cure the hiccups as well. You're the best, Mako. All right, Gilmet, we've got a stand to set up and goblins to hunt. Hey, let's go. But first, we should probably have another drink. Have fun, boys. You know. Uh, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, yes, put it. And she, she, like, pushes the teacup aside and she starts pouring you a brandy. Uh, oh, there it is. I'll... I'll take a water. Thank you. No, 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 no. You got to have one of these. Two. Two a good day of business. All right. Peer pressure wins. I'll do a shot. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so Divis is up on the roof. Um, It's a pretty good festival. Around noon time, you know, Koya, Brothy, you guys are all in, uh, you know, the center of it. They do. It's a a fantastic tribute to Desna. They release the, the Swallows. They also do uh, small little ceremonies for some of the other deities. You guys would know. Uh, you guys do some knowledge locals oh. for everyone. Yeah, Agnes has that very much. A little knowledge nobility. Are there any kings in the uh, immediate area? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Divish got a twenty, just as well because he grew up here. And I have a nine because oh, I'm short and angry. Twenty-five. So Zephyr rolls a two. I don't even know where my own house is. <laughs> right. There's too many people. You can't figure anything out. Get more at 21 on knowledge nobility. <laughs> all right, so you, got, you guys know. Not what was asked for. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, Gilmet would know. Uh, Divish would know. Uh, Agnes would know, too. Uh, Desna is kind of like the people's deity here. Like like the uh, the, the cathedral has uh, monuments to Abadar, Gazra, Saren Ray, and Shaylin, too. But they're all pretty much represented i guess the nobility would would kind of would kind of go into that it is um you would know that you know sandpoint was founded by by families out of magnamar and those are more symbolic of them not to say like common people don't worship them but desna is more of the people thing so this is the the swallowtail festival is really like a like a people's pride thing like the the, the common folk are really celebrating on the uh, on this day so so it's it's a bit of a big deal, you know. They they hold it very true to their hearts there. And um, uh, this is about five years ago or so. Uh, the cathedral was attacked by goblins on this day, so everyone's always a little bit a little bit cautious. But today goes off without a hitch. Uh, you guys can feel there's a there's a good deal of pride among the people. Zephyr, roll a um, roll a roll a craft. Or you have cra- craft or profession for bow? Craft. I have both. Both. Okay. Uh, pick one and roll it. Twenty two. Okay, so you make some money. I'm going to say, what, what was your asking price for the bows? What were you trying to sell them for? Uh, is, if, it's, if it's short bows... Uh, that 30, I think it's regular. Yeah. All right, yeah. So so with that, yeah, you can, you can sell them 30. So you sold you sold the six for 30 a piece. Uh, pretty busy day. You know, it's more than you would expect to make. But yeah, uh, it's a pretty happening festival. Towards the end of the day, um, they have the award ceremony. And... and uh, uh, of course, the Rusty Dragon does well again. Rusty Dragon gets an award. There's, there's a big celebration going on. Uh, lots of people going down there. Uh, lots of drinking already. Come about sunset, Divish is up on the roof of the cathedral. What is he What is he doing? He's going to start setting off the fireworks? Uh, yeah, so first he's going to get everybody's attention by tossing a firecracker into the air so it detonates above people's heads. Oh, no. And then he, and then he shouts down, Ladies and the gentlemen, the show is about to begin. Now you may know me as Resident Fuck Up, or lovable rapscallion, Devish Mavosti, but today you will know me as the showman and craftsman that I truly am. And uh, he lights uh, a bunch of Desnan candles, which are, uh, they're like Roman candles surrounded set up in a star and they light up at random and he starts to juggle them <laughs> uh, as they go off in his hands and he tries not to drop any and uh, like a stray stray one kind of flies off and hits one of the new towers and people go <gasps> <laughs> I look down at Gilmet and I'm like 
Oh god, I'm glad I prepared Create Water today because he's gonna burn the whole fucking town down. Uh, should I roll sleight of hand to see how the juggling goes? Yeah, do sleight of hand. <laughs> <laughs> alright, uh, that's a 17. Alright, alright, yeah, not, you do pretty not good. Not bad, not great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you managed, right. you managed to juggle him, right? All right, one, 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 one goes off and digs him in the side of the head, and he almost <laughs> drops him up, but he catches him again. He's like, oh, oh, oh. he's like, oh, you think that's something? You haven't seen anything yet. And he uh, reaches down, and he lights three sky rockets to go off in a trident formation. And they fly up, and uh, he, he tried to put some, put some extra something in there so they blow up in rainbow colors for Desna. And, uh... It's like, and last but certainly not least, a dragon candle from far away, Tian Sha. And he he spent about 500 gold in fireworks with his loan. <laughs> uh, he, he, he ordered this special because this is above his crafting. Uh, so he, he lights. Uh, as he announces that. Are there any kids within the immediate area of him? Yeah, I mean, you're up on the you're up on the roof doing this, right? Or are you down on the ground? I'm with uh, I'm with Zephyr. No, I mean uh, Divish. Are you up on the roof or you're on the ground? D- right? Divish is up on the roof. Okay. So I'm right. on the ground beneath him. Are there any like packs of kids? Oh or yeah, anything? yeah. There's a lot of kids. It's a big deal. They're all staying out to watch the fireworks. Gilmet's gonna try to get in front of them and. And Divish, <laughs> and just like, all right, let's uh, let's uh, back up just a little bit. We'll, we'll give him a little. I agree. I agree. Hundred yard zone of safety. Back it up, kids. Don't worry. Yeah. All right. Uh, lastly, he uh, he sets up uh, the dragon candle. He's like, this is gonna be a real treat for you all. You'll never see anything like it for the rest of your lives. That's what I'm worried about. Oh, lights it up and (laughs) (laughs) and And roll up a new PC. (laughs) (laughs) Should I should I write a fireworks technician profession (laughs) roll? (laughs) No, 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 you're good. All right, uh, it flies about it's like several hundred feet up. It goes sixty feet for four rounds, um, and then blows up in a big fancy dragon. Ah. Uh, uh. So, Divis, roll the perception. All right. I got bum, a 13. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. Wow. Uh, I really did it this time. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to have everyone else roll perceptions as well. Yeah. As the shifty eyed, paranoid guy. Bradley with a 22. Agnes rolled a 12. Gimlet, 21. Okay. Was there any stonework involved? I am a dwarf. Nope. Not this time around. Zephyr. Damn. With a 26. All right, so you guys are all watching this. Divis is going nuts. Woo-hoo, boo-hoo, shooting the fireworks. Uh, let's see, so uh, Gilmet and Zephyr are standing together? Yeah. And Brothy, are you with uh, Koya? Are you with them? Um, probably with them. Okay. Uh, Brothy, you see there are two men. They're, you can't see because of the fireworks going off. They look very, like, dressed dark. And they're approaching Divish on the roof. And Zephyr and um, Gilmet... You guys are looking off to the side briefly, and you see a bunch of fireworks going off over by the bridge. You see a bunch of fireworks going off down there. And where in relation to where we are currently at with that? Like, where it is? is, um, The cathedral is up on a ledge, so you guys are kind of raised above the buildings uh, underneath you. So you have a pretty clear view. Uh, You just see, like, these little explosions, these little fireworks going off uh, near the bridge. What the fuck's going on over there? Some get away. I look for any smoke trails. Does it look like they were they were shot off of the tower that Divish is on, the cathedral? No, it looks like it looks like they're all getting fired off down there. Hmm. Hey. Someone's celebrating by themselves, I guess. Yeah, hey. good for them. So Divish, Divish, you turn around and you see two guards standing there, and one of them says, "Yeah, Divish, thought we'd find you up here. Yeah, sorry to have to do this again, but uh, we've got to oh, take you." I- <laughs> Hello, Frank. Ha, how's the wife and kids? Yeah, uh, yeah, good, good, Divish. But uh, yeah, we gotta, we gotta take uh, uh, in. And what about you, Percy? I, I bet you, you're uh, good, dude, doing well. You're singing lessons, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. D- hey, listen, you can't talk your way out of this one, mate. I mean, you, you're, you're in a bit of a bind here. He's uh, backing up slowly towards the the ledge. No, no, no! Don't do anything foolish. They got like their hands holding out. We've just got to take you in for a couple of questions. There's nothing. 
nothing to worry about, but it's, uh, it, it, it's there's something it's something important we've got to talk to you about. So just come on, come on down. Let's let's head on down to the uh, down to the sheriff's office. It's just a couple of questions, right? Divish is going to pull out his his uh, contingency weapon for just this the just this uh, situation and throws flash powder in front of the two guards. <laughs> Okay. Oh boy! I just saw Gilman. Here we go. I told you to <laughs> keep your eye out. And he says, "Don't blink." But he blinks, of course. All right, roll. Um, uh, just roll a roll a stealth. I, I mean, I assume you're trying to go it's away. It's a not fortitude just DC it. for them to negate. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to. He wants to stealth. All right. That's a twenty-four stealth. Pretty good. All right. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so you are good. So the guards just, like, you walk right by them. They can't see anything. They're like, ah, God, you're fucking divish, man. Uh, just some fucking <laughs> questions. What are you going to do? I can't fucking see, mate. Good this afternoon, gentlemen. <laughs> and he starts climbing to back down the scaffolding. <laughs> All right. Okay. So uh, you get down. Um, uh, it's uh, see, Zephyr, Zephyr Gilmet in Brothy. Uh, the fireworks over there are still continuing to go off. You see the flashbang go up on top of the cathedral, and you start hearing somebody somebody screaming, Help me! Help! Help! You might get your adventure after all, Gilman. Hello listeners, this is Strange Gods DJ Barry Clare, here to remind you to check out Sirenscape to give your games that extra atmospheric itch that will make them unforgettable. <laughs>